So we'll now move to item 16, the task and finish group inquiry on school transport. Uh, in the absence of Councillor Foster, who was the inquiry chair, uh, Councillor Vassalian has kindly agreed as one of the task force members to introduce the item. Councillor Vassalian. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so this is a piece of work by scrutiny um, that the full committee felt um, deserved a dedicated task and finish group, a subcommittee of, of the Scrutiny Children's Committee, and, and as, as one of the six, I'm talking to it today. Uh, we met seven weeks ago where the subcommittee gave its findings to the full committee in April, and that's what you're now seeing with the full committee's endorsement um, uh, before exec today. First of all, I'd like to um, express my gratitude to Councillor Clark, who's the executive member, for supporting this review by scrutiny and particularly for lending her offices, so to speak. Um, there was a great deal of data uh, and time spent by senior and, and, and middle management officers, uh, and I'm grateful to the executive member for enabling that to happen. Um, we had five lines of inquiry. Um, as you can see on uh, convene page 176, if that's helpful. But very quickly, our primary focus uh, amongst those five became the length and the quality of the journeys of our school children. Um, statutory guidance um, suggests a best practice maximum journey length, uh, and that's, um, believe it or not, 45 minutes maximum for a primary age child, uh, and one hour 15 for a secondary age, so 11-year-olds and, and older. That's the maximum each way. So you could, your child could be spending two and a half hours a day commuting on a bus with other children, uh, and that would be a statutory guidance for best practice. So that's, that's the context. Um, many of us as, as, as councillors, as ward members, I must say, um, have got to know some of the school bus routes over the years in our own villages and towns. Um, and I think it's reasonable for me to say that um, some of us, perhaps many of us, have been surprised that some of the peculiar routes that the buses take, um, the length of them, and, and perhaps um, uh, the, the quality. Uh, so it's an issue that's relevant to every ward councillor, all 59 of us, I would suggest. And, of course, we have a general duty to just oversee and scrutinise the, the £9 million pounds that we spend each year and every year on school transport. So that was the motivation for the committee and for those six members to volunteer for the task and finish. Uh, Chairman, as you'll see, there were essentially three substantive recommendations from scrutiny to your executive. Um, unusually, the most controversial one is first on the list. Um, and this is the catchment areas of um, the schools because the catchment areas dictate the legal obligation of the council to provide free transport, a bus, or, or the money if you don't want to take the bus. And if the catchment area, so literally the borders drawn around a town, um, are peculiar, then you start to get peculiar bus routes, uh, but also frustrated parents who have perhaps moved into a house believing the school is just over there, 300 metres away, um, yet your catchment has a peculiar line running through the town, um, which prevents you from being entitled to get to that school in terms of a free bus. Um, although that's probably a bad example because 300 metres isn't that far. But that's the kind of um, issue that, frankly, we've been struggling with for at least the 10 years I've been on this council. So I know the executive member will understand my... Um, um, I share her, her challenge and frustration with her officers and, and her, her own portfolio in how to tackle this. And the focus group, um, the task and finish group, which is cross-party, it must be, act, must be made clear, it was from many different, well, from different political parties, we don't have that many on Central Bedfordshire, um, cross-party unanimity that the catchment areas really do need looking at before the implementation of Schools for the Future programme. So please, officers, don't do this once you've written the Schools for the Future solution then go and look at catchment areas. It really must be done as part and parcel of, of um, how schools flow or how the children flow um, from lower, middle, upper or primary, secondary. So hopefully that will be clearly minuted and, and scrutiny can um, look at this executive's minutes in the years to come and um, uh, help 
uh, officers and executive members in trying to tackle that very complicated issue, but one that does need tackling. Uh, the second one, Chairman, is route optimization. Um, I want to be as, as positive as possible, but um, officers, I'm sure, will share the frustration with elected members that the optimization software, in fact, is, has been, up until last week at least, unable to optimize. Uh, we're paying a private company to do that, but we were. Um, last week, I believe, the new software was implemented. 31st of May is when the old contract was due to expire, so... Um, uh, perhaps a comment could be made about, about that software. But that should now, Chairman, enable um, this Council to capture the journey times and then make a proper assessment um, of uh, how to optimise and, and make it more efficient. And finally, the annual survey um, that this Council runs to, cap to capture public feedback, um, it was felt that we should make a particular effort in a, a call for evidence, much like we do in other directorates, to specifically seek out feedback from certain communities, parents in those communities, about the quality and length of their journeys. So very grateful to the, the council, to the exec member for giving her offices to the scrutiny committee. Um, and you've got our full support in trying to tackle some of the wicked issues in school buses. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that uh, introduction, Captain Sally, and emphasising uh, the key points of the report.